يا يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم There is truth and falsehood and this is a subject that is very clear in the book of Allah one of the very basic concepts that is very clear in the book of Allah, the Qur'an, that amazingly, human beings on the face of earth, many of them, they tend to confuse the truth with falsehood. And that's why when we hold fast to the book of Allah, when we get to read the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, the subject is very clear from the very beginning to the end, the truth and falsehood. And if the matter is not upon the truth, that means it's upon falsehood. The Quran talks about the truth in general and in details and it talks about the people of the truth and their characteristics and how they become the people of the truth. And it talks about falsehood in details and the people of falsehood. And it talks about a struggle that is a continuous one from the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment the struggle between the truth and falsehood, the struggle between the people of the truth and the people of falsehood. The Quran talks about the outcome in this life and in the hereafter as a result of the struggle and the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people of the truth and that they would have to face all kinds of difficulties and sometimes atrocities, sometimes they would even lose their lives but the outcome of it is an everlasting joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers, the people of the truth. So this is one of the ways that a Muslim, when he reads the Qur'an, he should read the Qur'an with that perspective, that we, I want to be upon the truth, that a person wants to know the truth, wants to be upon the truth, to be patient, to apply the truth, and also to be warned against falsehood. And that's why knowing what is falsehood, what is wrong, what is evil, to avoid it, not according to our own liking and our own terms, but according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and stated clearly in the book of Allah, the Qur'an. Also the Qur'an warns the people of the truth, warns the believers from the plots and the ways of the people of falsehood. And when he talks about the people of falsehood, he talks about why they are upon falsehood, and one of which is that they associate partners with Allah. They do not fulfill the purpose of their life. They worship other than the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. They deviate away from the message of the messengers of Allah. And last episode we talked about those who deviated from the truth, deviated from the message of Musa salam and Isa salam, the son of Mary and how they associated partners with Allah. They claimed a son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they were not ordered except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallam in Surah At-Tawbah to purify Al-Masjid Al-Haram from them, from those who have these evil shirk and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. And we're continuing with the same subject and it shows how the people of falsehood, they will take all the means to extinguish the light of Allah. The truth is like the light in the midst of darkness. So when we, as we perceive how the human beings, they are in total darkness, unless they, they receive the light from an external source, not from then within their own selves. And this external source is the wahi, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final revelation from Allah, the light that will stay till the day of judgment is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So the people of falsehood, they will take all the means to extinguish this light but they will fail. And the people of the truth, they need to hold fast to this truth. And they need to convey the truth and to be humble and to be kind and to be lenient and so on. But the Quran exposes the affairs of the falsehood 
so that people are warned against them, so that people take the matter of the religion seriously and to warn the people of falsehood that they need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since the name of the surah is Surah At-Tawbah. In this episode, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go through verses in Surah At-Tawbah number 32 to 35 that talks and continuing the subject of the superiority of the truth. And we talked about how the truth is always superior. It doesn't have to have strength, physical strength. The people of the truth, they might not have power and wealth at certain times. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So if they're physically weak and oppressed, they still they are superior with the truth that they have and they carry. That's why they need to be upon it and to continue to be upon it till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their situation. We'll start inshallah ta'ala with verse number 32. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُونَ أَن يُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَن يُتِمَّ نُورَهُ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ which means they want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. But Allah refuses except to perfect His light, although the disbelievers dislike it. Yuridun, they want. Right? Al-irada is to will something, to want something. Who are the ones that are mentioned here? These are the ones that are mentioned in the previous verses. Those who claim that Jesus is the son of Allah or Uzair, Ezra is the son of Allah the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, those who are upon falsehood and they take the means to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who spread corruption on the face of earth, they intend to eliminate the truth, the people of the truth, the believers, the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the final messenger of Allah. When they spread this evil corruption on the face of earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about them, يريدون, they want, they intend and they take the means to do this, they want to extinguish, يطفئوا, that means to extinguish Nur Allah, the light of Allah. بأفواههم with their mouths. What is the light of Allah? The book of Allah, the deen of Islam, the way of the Prophet They want to extinguish this light. With what? With their mouths. And of course there's no way they can extinguish that. Because their mouth, what is their mouth? Their speech their evil speech, their hatred speech, they would do and they would find themselves advancing in this because they have the power, they have the wealth, they have the means, but they would never be able to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will continue to stay till the day of judgment. And the nur of Allah, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not even you know, as much as the sun, for example. Nobody can extinguish the light of the sun with their mouths, let along with anything else. Right? So they would never be able to do so to a physical light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So you can imagine the light of Allah, the light of the truth, which is the deen of Allah, the deen of Islam. But this is what they want and they take the means. And it has some effect you know, among the, the, some of the believers. They would turn away from the truth. They will be deceived. They will follow those who are superior than them physically. All kinds of things. But the people of the truth, they hold fast to the truth till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their situation. So this is their intention, this is what they seek, this is what they do. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is how the human beings they do. وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُتِمَّ نُورَ يَأْبَ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses, refuses that this will prevail and they would have the end of all things, that they will be superior forever in the absolute sense. They might gain some uh, success some here or there, but it's not really success, it's loss for them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُتِمَّ نُورًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses that except to perfect His light. The light of Allah would be perfected, it was perfected at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And they plotted against the Prophet ﷺ, the Romans came and the Persians and they fought against the Prophet ﷺ and the people of Quraysh. And they surrounded the Prophet ﷺ and his companions radiallahu anhum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to His Prophet and the companions radiallahu anhum and for those who always follow them till the day of judgment. So Allah, you can imagine, you can see the strength of it that brings so much strength in the hearts of the believers. Allah, they, the disbelievers, they want and they take the means and they spend their money and their wealth and they take all the efforts. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses illa ayyutimma nura. He would refuse all things except to perfect his light. And the perfection of the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the truth to be present. 
and to be in the hearts of the believers. Even if the disbelievers, they dislike it, it doesn't matter. This is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really what it matters, as we said, it is not necessarily that physically the people of the truth will have more power, more wealth. This is something that happens and sometimes they lose this with whatever reasons and one of which is when they turn away from the truth, when they don't hold fast to the truth as a nation. But at all times, when the hearts are upon the truth, that means the people of the truth are always superior. And that's something that even Imam Ahmad rahimahullah and his son said something or asked him something to the like of which, that don't you see the people of falsehood, how they are superior over the people of the truth? And he corrected his misunderstanding because he understood the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, no, as long as the hearts are upon the truth, that means the people of the truth are superior. So if someone changes the hearts of the people of the truth, that person is defeated. But as long as the person's heart is upon the truth, and therefore the speech and actions follows, that person is upon the truth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to perfect his light physically, when people are upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also for this revelation, nobody will have the ability whatsoever to wipe it away. Nobody will have the ability to wipe away the ummah of the Prophet والسلام, even if the disbelievers, they hate it and they dislike it. The next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the matter very clear. And this is again the superiority of the truth that will continue to be till the day of judgment. The next verse, verse number 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over our religion, although they who, they who associate others with Allah dislike it. Huwallavi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one. Huwallavi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one. Arsala rasulahu. Arsala, that's the verb of the message. He's the one that sent. Arsala, he's the one that sent. Sent who? Rasulahu, his messenger. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bil huda, with guidance. He sent him with what? Bil huda, with guidance. Wa deen al and the religion of truth. This is the religion of the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with guidance and deen al the religion of the truth, the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the absolute truth with all possible details there. There is nothing missing of the complete and the perfect truth unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it perfectly to the Prophet ﷺ without anything missing in it whatsoever. And the Prophet ﷺ, before that even the Qur'an mentions that clearly. On that day, I completed for you your religion and perfected my favor upon you and pleased for you to have the religion of Islam as your religion. So, أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ I completed your religion. And here in this verse says, what is this religion? Deen al-Haqq. This is the deen, this is the religion of the truth. It's been completed. It's been perfected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sent the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa He sent them with the perfect religion, with the religion of the truth, and He perfected it in every aspect of life. In matters of belief, there is nothing more guiding than this. This is the ultimate guidance in the Qur'an and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. All the perfect believers, and that's why this is the message, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preserved for people to see. Human beings, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability to think, when they have the intellectual ability to see and to differentiate between the truth versus the falsehood, they need to see what's out there. Whoever, whatever a person is upon something on the face of earth, compare what you are upon, Compare that to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. There's no comparison. Nothing will stand in front of that truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. Guidance and deen al-haqq. But the problem is that many of the people of the truth, they do not learn the truth in the deen of Islam. They are not upon that truth in learning and acting according to it. So the rest of the people, they're not saying that truth. And that's why we have a responsibility to be upon the truth and to learn it and to convey it to others. And for people need to be aware of, of this and not to be deceived with 
following their desires. Another thing is the enemies of the truth. They intoxicate the people so much that they make them completely in, in, in some form of a disillusion. They do not really know exactly how to think. So the human beings, they need to think about something called haqqa and batal, truth and falsehood and guidance and misguidance. And when they see for themselves, they would see the message very clear in the book of Allah and in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu We'll continue inshallah ta'ala with the verses right after the break, so stay with us inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah Look at the barakah and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put into this form. When the cloud comes and rains just for him, subhanAllah. I mean, my brother goes and works, and he provides for me, and I just sit back and I, and I worship. So they have it divided, where one works and the other one worships. Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he said, Ahu khayrun mink, that your brother is better than you. He was a man who devoted his life solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah day and night. And here he's accused He's falsely accused of fornicating. Allah. Three people that Allah loves. And as a Muslim, as soon as you hear this, you're like, who are these three? I wonder who they are. How can I be from them? Who are they? And these are things that you, you'll find it, the people who are attached to the dunya sometimes, it's not a manly thing. It's more of a feminine type thing. It's a soft thing. That Allah said, whoever strives for us, that verily we should guide them to our ways, and indeed Allah will be with the doers of good. So if you're from the doers of good, ones who are striving, Allah is going to be with you, He's going to assist you, He's going to help you in Shalom time. He would come every night, and He would give this milk to His parents first, and then give the milk to the rest of the family. One night He was late, He came home late. So what does He do? He holds that milk and won't let anybody drink it. Not his children, not his wife, until his parents wake up in the morning and they drink it first. Welcome back and we are with verses number 32 to 35 from Surah at tawbah and beautiful verses that talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the light of Allah, the truth, the deen of Islam, the Quran and the way the Prophet sallam always superior at all times with its evidence, with its clarity and no matter what the enemies of Allah, they try to extinguish this light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will fail because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Bilhuda with guidance, with deen al haqq and the deen, the religion of the truth, for what reason? And this again, as we said, al huda with deen al haqq guidance, guidance to all mankind, guidance to the believers after guidance, with deen al haqq and the religion of the truth. That means there is the religion of the truth and there is falsehood. And if it's not the religion of the truth, that means it's falsehood out there. And as we said. This is for human beings when they think this way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to think this way. You know, when a person would say and invite people, there is haqqa and there is batil, see for yourself. What is the haqqa, what is the truth, and what is falsehood? And when people are invited to see the truth, and they compare that truth to what they have with them, they would see clearly how falsehood they are upon. But with the condition that they're not intoxicated in this life to follow their desires, to remove the arrogance, to remove the, this attachment to the ways of the fathers and the forefathers and the generations before and so on. The truth is beyond all of that. Because when a person think with real truth, truthfulness and sincerity, he would say that the ways of the forefathers has nothing to do with the truth versus falsehood. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that in the Quran. What if the forefathers, they were upon falsehood? Who can guarantee that they were not on, on, on truth or the falsehood? So therefore, it's very important for the person to see and to learn the deen of Islam, to see how that this is deen al-haqq, especially when you compare it to the reality that the human beings are living today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and perfected his religion. 
This religion is completed, is perfected in every aspect of it with guidance and deen al haqqa and the religion of the truth. For what reason? لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ To make it apparent, to make it superior, to manifest it, meaning this religion of the truth over all religion. A person might say, but sometimes this is not the case. The Prophet ﷺ in the beginning, he was the weaker side physically and the disbelievers, they were superior physically. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet ﷺ and his companions superior. And the Ummah, the Prophet ﷺ physically, they were well established on the face of earth when they, hold, when they held fast to the truth. And then things start to deteriorate again. And we see the situations of the believers today. So how can that be? When it comes to the truth, it's always superior. And it's always superior at, at all times, even in the weakest times. Now, is the deen of Islam superior? Definitely. With what? With its hujjah and bayan, with its evidence, with its clarity. Nobody can defeat the arguments and the evidences in the deen of Islam. But it needs the people of knowledge, those who would learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they would convey the truth. The truth is there, is within this book of Allah, and the way of the Prophet And this religion of Islam is not for a certain group of people. And that's it, and there's no more chances for people to be upon the truth. This is the religion of all mankind. This is the Prophet ﷺ is the prophet of all mankind. He is their prophet. He's the prophet of all of the people. He was sent to them to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he left his message and it's perfected and it's preserved, preserved and nothing of it has been distorted or changed for people to see with their own selves and to compare this to what they are upon. And they would see how clear the message of the book of Allah that calls people to the truth, to the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how the truth becomes superior on the land. And it was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ physically. Even if the polytheists, those who associate partners with Allah, even if they dislike it, it's not going to be according to what they like or what they dislike. So if they all get together and they take all the means to distinguish the light of Allah, to eliminate the guidance and the religion of the truth, they have no capacity to do that. Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared the matter clearly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also as we heard, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated very clearly that the disbelievers they spend from their wealth to oppose, to block people away from the path of Allah to deviate people from seeing and hearing the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they will spend it. And then it will be a regret for them and they will be defeated. Because nobody will have the ability to distinguish the light of Allah. Yes, it becomes at certain times not clear to the people. Why? Because there's so many hindrances. There's so much evil lies that spread upon, upon the, among the people about the truth. They tell people that this is evil that this is not right, that this is this and this is that. They say things with their mouths, right? And when, when people, they do not put the effort to get to know the truth, so they would follow those who lead them and those who would make them blind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always make the truth superior with evidence, with clear evidence at all times. And that's why, as we say, nobody can defeat the arguments. And these evidence is mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which shows again, who wants to be among what is superior and that is the truth? Definitely those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. And that's why when the people are upon the truth, they have that superiority as we said. This is the most important concern in their life, to be upon the truth, even if they are physically weak, even if people, they ridicule them or they look down upon them. When they have this in their hearts, the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them and give them steadfastness. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the people of falsehood and some of their characteristics and warning the believers because some of the people that they have the truth in them, meaning they follow the Prophet and they are Muslims, they imitate the people of falsehood in their characteristics. That means they're turning away from the truth. So the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of the characteristics of those who are mentioned before, those who associated partners with Allah and how they manipulate people. And that's how people, they become deceived away from the truth. 
by the manipulation of their religious leaders, by the manipulation of those who are in charge of them and the masses, they don't put the effort to get to know the truth. They just blindly follow their leaders, their forefathers, their religious leaders, whatever, and they don't put the effort to get to know the truth. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability and the intellect to see the truth. It's not something deep to understand. It's not something that is difficult to understand. does not need a person to be in the highest level of, of education to understand it. It fits the nature of every single human being. It's so universal that all of the human beings, they can relate to it. But what happens again? Their leaders, they manipulate them. And as we would see in the verses, exposing the affairs and the characteristics of these leaders. The next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that in verse number 34. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu inna kathiran min al-ahbari wa abdughdani la ya'kuluna amwala al-nasi bil-baatil wa yasudduna an sabilillah. والذين يكنزون الذهب والفضة ولا ينفقونها في سبيل الله فبشرهم بعذاب أليم which means O you who have believed indeed many of the scholars and the monks devour the wealth of people unjustly and avert them from the way of Allah and those who hoard gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah give them tidings of a painful punishment again the call is to the believers Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu This beautiful call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the believers superior by calling them. They are superior with their iman, with their faith. Not the superiority of injustice and arrogance. It's the superiority of al-iman, faith, and to be upon the truth. And since they are the believers, therefore they ought to submit themselves to the orders of Allah. And this is basically the implication of being among the believers, to listen to the orders of Allah to apply it, to submit yourself to the truth so that you are among the people of the truth, those who follow the truth. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, you who believe, inna kathira. And you can see the relationship between this and the one before. So to be upon the religion of the truth, to be superior, to be guided, then fulfill the orders of Allah. Follow these calls from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this call? Inna kathira min al-ahbari wa al-ruhban. Indeed there are many, not all of them, but there are many of the Ahbar and the Ruhban. The Ahbar refers to the scholars of the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, and the Ruhban, the monks, those who are uh, devoted in matters of worship, and they seclude themselves and so on. Many of them, what do they do as evil? They devour the wealth of people unjustly. They take the wealth of the people unjustly. Whether it's for them to claim that they have the passage for them to paradise, or uh, they take their wealth to um, grant them forgiveness or uh, to grant them whatever blessings, right? And they take their wealth constantly. And what do they use the wealth for? For their own benefit, for them to accumulate more and more wealth. They use the religion to gather and to accumulate and to collect the wealth of the people for their own personal benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning the believers against this attitude and against this evil action and against these people. Bilbatil, they take the wealth of the people with falsehood. That means to take the wealth of the people, there is a, a way that it's to be done with the truth. Meaning, when the people give their zakah, when they give their obligatory charity to be distributed among themselves also to the poor and the needy and so on and so forth, to build the houses of Allah for all kinds of good causes, this is definitely a good thing. But for the people of knowledge or the people of religion to take it for their own selves and to benefit from their own, for their own personal benefit, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is condemning. And وَيَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They don't only manipulate the people and take their wealth, but they also يَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They avert them from the way of Allah. Because they hide the truth about the Prophet ﷺ because if they show the truth to the people, they would lose this wealth because there's no more manipulation for them. They won't be the religious leaders anymore. So they avert the people from the way of Allah so that they will continue to devour the wealth of the people and to take it unjustly. So why also do not say Because people in general, they trust their religious leaders. So they would follow them and they would listen to them. And that's why they have a huge responsibility. Those who are uh, the religious leaders, those who have the truth and they teach people the truth. It is 
haram for them, it's forbidden for them to hide the truth, let alone to say lies to the people. Right? And that's something that is for all people. The scholars of the deen of Islam, they have this responsibility not to distort the truth when they explaining the verses of the Quran, when they're explaining the deen of Allah. It is not a subject of the pleasing others or hiding that this is not something for a human being that we, don't, we do not own this. This is the deen of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to speak the truth, to convey the truth, and to be upon the truth ourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against those who would prevent people from following the truth. As a result of that, they would lose their positions of being their leader, their religious leaders, or they would lose this manipulation where they would collect their money and so on in a falsehood. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, And those who they keep the gold and the silver, they amass it, they hoard it, and they make it as treasures. They don't spend it for the sake of Allah. They don't spend it in the way of Allah. Spending it in the way of Allah, as Ramadan mentioned in the tafsir, is when they do not give the zakah. Because if a person have wealth, as long as they give the zakah, the obligatory charity, there's no sin on them. But these people, they rather they accumulate the silver and the gold and the wealth, and they don't spend a portion of it for the sake of Allah. They don't give the obligatory charity, which is a zakah, a very small percentage of one's wealth that is saved, not something that earnings based on earnings, but it's based on the saved wealth of the person, which is 2.5%, which is considered to be nothing. But still, they would not give that away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Warn them with a painful punishment. And the Prophet ﷺ explained that also in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We'll continue with that in the next verse, inshaAllah ta'ala, after the break. So stay with us, inshaAllah. محمد رسول الله. The mission of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is لا إله إلا الله is to carry the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him, right. as many people as he can. So this is the mission. The mission is needed by everybody. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Hmm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. And what happens is they get so many rejections, but they feel so bad about themselves. They don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills, your current experience, which by time and effort can develop. You are looking for another job, but temporarily you are going to, you are doing this job, so perfect it. And this is part of our great religion is mm. perfection. And perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this. Perfect right. your work, give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have. For example, on, on another note, if you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize, you cannot even look for the good things. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu rasulullah. Welcome back and with verses in Surah At-Tawbah number 32 to 35. And as we heard the warning against those who they accumulate the wealth of others, they amass the wealth of others in falsehood. These religious leaders, those who would deceive people and manipulate them and uh, stop them from listening and getting to know the truth. And also warning against those who would hoard the gold and silver and they don't spend a portion of it, the zakah, the obligatory charity, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Warn all of these people with the painful torment in the hereafter in the Day of Judgment. Shows the responsibility of the people of knowledge to convey the truth. And the warning against deceiving the masses, their followers, by hiding the truth to them out of ignorance or out of intentional to uh, gain from the people and from the masses and the followers because if they show them, show them the truth about the Prophet and they would follow the Prophet 
these religious leaders, they won't have these manipulations anymore. They would lose. They were, this is how they think. And they did not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they repent to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward them abundantly. And he would even give them the goodness of this life here in the hereafter. What is this painful torment that is awaiting for them in the Day of Judgment? And that's explained in the next verse, verse number 35, and also in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, Verse number 35 explains that by saying, يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ هَذَا مَا كَنَزْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوكُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ Which means the day when it will be heated in the fire of hell and seared therewith will be their foreheads, their flanks and their backs. It will be said this is what you hoarded for yourselves so taste what you used to hoard. So this is the punishment of those who withhold the zakah. They withhold this zakah which is one of the pillars of Al-Islam. As we know as zakah to give the zakah is one of the pillars of Al-Islam. And some people they do not give it for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this name yaknizun, they hoard. When someone saves something, like you can uh, picture that evil greedy person, when he takes you know, his wealth and put it like in a treasure and he dig under the ground and he save it. Someone that is so greedy, someone that is so stingy. So they do not give that small portion of the zakah, which is so insignificant compared to their wealth. This wealth that is saved. We see nowadays as an evidence against those who do not give zakah. How they would pay taxes and sometimes the taxes would reach 40%. And the taxes is not based on the money that they save that they're not using as the zakah does. But rather it's based on their earnings. A person might earn and he, spend, he has a lot of you know, things to spend on, necessities. But the taxes they take from the earnings of the person. The zakah because it's the order of Allah. And the orders of Allah are the most just. But when it comes from the human beings, things from the human beings is not really the most just. The human beings, they tend to, to make prevail what is according to their own interest. The interest of the rich maybe, or the interest of those who are in charge, or manipulating people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all. We would see how the zakah, the, the establishment of the rulings of the zakah is such a perfect and a, and a comprehensive one. That by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eliminates all kinds of evil and poverty if people would take it and they would apply it in the proper way. So this zakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned those who do not give it with a severe torment in the hereafter, when you see that it's based on saved money, especially when it comes to the gold and silver, it's based on not earnings again. If a person is earning a billion but he spends his billion, there's no zakah on him. But if someone that saved his money, saved his gold and silver or money, and it stays for a, a whole lunar year, and it's over a minimum requirement, which is the nisab of the zakah, and this is not the time to describe or to talk about the rulings of the zakah, then they give only for this money that has been saved for an entire year, did not go be, uh, below this nisab or this minimum requirement, they will give 2.5%. You divide it by 40. So it's nothing really compared to the wealth they have for every thousand, twenty-five only. And when a person withhold this, and this money is to be taken to be given to who? To be given to the poor and the needy and uh, those who are in debt and they're not able to pay their debt. So basically, and the different categories of the zakah as mentioned also in Surah At-Tawbah as it will come inshallah ta'ala. So when people do not give this obligatory portion of their wealth, which is very small, there's a severe torment that is awaiting for them. It also shows that this zakah in the deen of al-Islam is something that a person should give with good intentions, with being pleased, not with stinginess, because this is not the right of the person, this is the right of the poor. You know, in Islam, and this is the balance in the deen of al-Islam. Your wealth is your wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors this. And nobody has the right to take care of your wealth. Right? Even though everything is owned by Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of all things and the owner of all of our wealths, He's the one that made it a mandatory thing to give a very small portion of it to the poor and the needy. Therefore, this money that is a small portion of one's wealth, that if he, is, he has to give zakah, does not belong to him. It belongs to those who are poor and needy and so on. It's a small portion again as we heard. 
And that's why a person, when we have wealth, we have to ask the people of knowledge. We have to make sure because it doesn't, you know, uh, become void if a person did not pay it for the past years. Once a person has the means to give the zakah, you know, if he repented to Allah 40 years later and he didn't use to pay zakah, he has to pay for all of these 40 years, right? Because this is right of the poor that has been wasted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the punishment of such a person in the day of judgment, يَوْمَ يُحْمَ عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمِ it will be heated. These um, plates of gold and silver will be heated in the hellfire. فَتُكْوَ بِهَا جِبَاهُهُمْ So it will be heated in the fire of hell and then tukwa. That means it will be seared therewith, meaning upon these people taken in the, as if like they're being branded with it, with this extreme heat from the hellfire, will be on their foreheads, their junubuhum uh, and their flanks, and duhuruhum and their backs. You can imagine how severe of a torment that is. This is when, this is in the day of judgment before people even enter the hellfire. How did we get to know that? From the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when he talked about the punishment of those who do not give the zakah as an obligatory charity, their punishment in the day of judgment before people go to the hellfire or Jannah. It will be given a wide, uh, a wide space for them, empty space for them. And the money that they used to withhold and do not give it for zakah will come and they would see it with their own eyes. If it's gold and silver, it will be as the verse said. It will be heated in the half fire and sealed and seared over their forehead and their flanks and their backs. In the day, as the Prophet ﷺ said, in the day its length is 50,000 years long. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Surah Al-Ma'arij, meaning in the day of judgment. And then they will be then judged whether they will go to the hellfire or to go to Jannah. This might be sufficient for them as a punishment. And then after that, they will enter Jannah if they died in the state of Islam. And if someone he had wealth like uh, uh, camels or, or animals or, you know, the camels or, or, or cows or the, the sheep and goat and so on, if they have this and they did not give it, these animals will come in the day of judgment and they will get to uh, step over him running back and forth on that individual in the day its length of 50,000 50, years long till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge among the people. So this is a punishment before the punishment. A punishment in the day of judgment before the real punishment which is entering the hellfire or the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. This punishment will be for what reason? It will be said to them, هَذَا مَا كَنَزْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ This is what you hoard for yourself. This is what you thought is going to benefit you. When a person, his greed would let him to stay away from fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this pillar of Islam. So it will be said to them as a, as a source of regret and misery for them with the physical punishment. This is your wealth. You can imagine someone that spent so much effort and time and from his health and wealth to accumulate his wealth. And this is such a precious thing to him. He will be punished by the same sort of wealth that he accumulated. And it will be heated against him and he will be, uh, as we heard, you know, seared with it and branded with it, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this verse. And it shows that when a person, anything on the face of earth, that a person would have that would make him disobey the orders of Allah, if he does not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be a source of regret for that person. Anything, whether it's wealth, whether it's a wife, whether it's a husband, or a child, or a house, or anything. If it's not according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, and the person does not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be a source of regret, as it's mentioned here clearly in this verse. هَذَا مَا كَنَزْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ ذُوقُوا Taste what you used to hoard and to accumulate in an unlawful way from this wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to give the zakat, which is a small portion for the poor and the needy. As we see in these verses, how in these verses that we just heard now, and how that related to the superiority of the truth, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the orders of Allah. And the people of falsehood, see what happened to them? They distorted the truth. Instead of giving from their wealth to the poor, they manipulated the people in amassing their wealth. And they would take their wealth in an unlawful way. And they're supposed to be their religious 
leaders and so on. We choose how the falsehood when it prevails, when it becomes superior physically on the land. This is the, uh, this is the level of corruption that occurs on the face of earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them severe warnings and severe punishment in the day of judgment. <coughs> on the other hand, the believers, the believers when they're upon the truth and they take the zakah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu Take from their wealth, O Prophet of Allah, sadaqa, charity, the obligatory charity, the obligatory zakah. For what reason? To tahiruhum. You purify them with it. And you purify their soul with it. This is purification of one's soul. But the people of the falsehood, they take the money of the people for their own personal benefit and to spread more evil and to spread more corruption. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against them. The same thing as we hear and when, as we get to learn from these verses, that because they try to do and take all the means to extinguish the light of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them fail. So they might look uh, to the foolish ones, to those who have no knowledge, and to the ignorant ones, that they're prevailing, that they're advancing, but in reality they are basically ruining themselves more than anything else. And the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevail. And to be rest assured that the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deen of Allah. This is the religion of Allah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it superior. And it's the honor for the people of the truth to hold fast to it because if they don't and they turn away from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned that He will exchange you, would replace you by other people, those who would hold fast to the truth and they will be upon the truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them victorious. And also it shows here, وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ if the disbelievers they hate it, if the polytheists they dislike it, that means what? That means the person, the more uh, the person is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that the disbelievers, the, those who associate partners with Allah, the more that they would hate you and they would try, try to take the means to stop you and to distinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for a person, for the believers to prepare themselves, to purify their hearts, and to uh, take the means to protect themselves and to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that they need to rely upon and they need to hold fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them victory. It shows also the characteristics of the, this religion of Islam and the job of the Messenger of Allah that he was sent with guidance and this guidance this is what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time we stand in the salah guide us to the straight path guidance to the deen of Islam and guidance within guidance and guidance after guidance to be upon the deen of Islam and to be upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and to stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us even if they dislike it so and also as the believers they see the more that the disbelievers are pleased with you that's not a good sign that means a person had followed their ways and their ways is not the same as the way of the truth, the way of the Messenger Also it exposes the affairs of those who are upon evil, those and warning against those who would do this and warning the believers and the Ummah of the Prophet especially the people of knowledge, not to follow the ways of the nations before, not to manipulate the people and take their wealth for one's personal interest, but rather to do things for the sake of Allah and warning against those who do not give the zakah and not to imitate the nations before but rather to give things for the sake of Allah and warning by mentioning what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment with this severe punishment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the Qur'an and apply it in their lives and to be among the people of the Qur'an and to make us hold fast to the deen of Islam, the deen of the truth till the last moment of our life. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka wa muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم فادعوا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون يا زكريا Yeah.
شاہدہ 